Hey, book lovers. My name is Em, and I want to talk about books. And cats. Welcome back, book lovers. Sorry for missing last week, but the chaos just continues in my life. Hopefully, it's going to let up now. Um, I didn't get to do the readathon as I had planned. I intended to participate, but we were kind of in the midst of the craziness between losing our cat Zeus and my dog Mooner getting sick. He got really sick last week, and it quickly went downhill. He'd been dealing with cancer for a while, but honestly, it hadn't really affected him until the last few days of his life. And that was the hardest decision I've ever had to make. I may talk mostly about my cats, but I love dogs just as much, and Moo was always kind of referred to as my third child. The hole that he has left in our lives is enormous. (laughs) So I was deeply grieving last week. Still am this week, but trying to get back on things. Uh, I had no interest in reading or recording or anything, so I just took last week off. It's been a rough couple of months in my household, but we're getting through the best we can, I guess. That's all you really can do. (laughs) Luckily, before all this happened, I had already listened to a book, so at least I have something to talk about. (laughs) So this week we're going to dip back into nonfiction with The Phantom Prince by Elizabeth and Molly Kendall. So I listened to this as an audiobook, and it was narrated in parts by the authors. Elizabeth Kendall was Ted Bundy's longtime, serious though off and on, uh, girlfriend, and Molly is her daughter. Ted Bundy was not her father, but he was a father figure to her. This whole book had me really conflicted, and it's kind of the vibe of the book. Most people are really familiar with Ted Bundy. There have been numerous programs and movies made about him. I personally am a murderino, as fans of My Favorite Murder call it, and I've seen all of the Ted Bundy stuff. I'm fascinated with psychology and especially with narcissists, and serial killers, and there's a lot of overlap in that Venn diagram. (laughs) This book was an interesting experience. It's kind of a firsthand tale of life with a monster who, for a while, seemed too good to be true. It's very interesting. There's a show on Amazon that I believe draws off of the first printing of this book, which was written when Elizabeth was still much more under his spell. Um, She's come around to a lot of things since then, and the version I listened to was the updated one. She's had more time to process and get therapy and change her mind about some things. I really cannot imagine how hard it would be to try to reconcile with the fact that you were in love and went back to numerous times a man who raped and killed so many women. How do you ever trust your judgment after that, honestly? I really do feel for this woman. There were a lot of moments when my brain was just screaming, red flag, red flag, but considering the time and the lack of information about any of that stuff, she was duped and then psychologically abused. And that doesn't lead to good, thoughtful decisions. So even the poor decisions she was making... I could kind of see why, you know? It was interesting to see how he tried to live his normal life and keep his secret, and you can definitely see when things start to intensify and get out of his control. Elizabeth was involved with him, but somehow lucky enough to be safe. Honestly, she and her daughter are so lucky to be alive. It's a really interesting read and a different perspective on a very well-known monster. And there's also a chapter at the end that is written by the daughter about her experience with Ted Bundy, and it's interesting and 
I really feel for her, too. So if you're interested in listening to this or reading it, it is The Phantom Prince by Elizabeth and Molly Kendall. We're going to take a quick break now, and then I have a rather macabre story for you from a book about fashion disasters. Be right back. Welcome back, book lovers. So if you are a regular listener to the pod, you may have heard me mention my perfect book Christmas gift that I got this last year, Fashion Victims, Dangers of Dress, Past and Present by Allison Matthews David. It covers some of the more macabre mistakes in the fashion industry over time. And today I want to talk about a horrific little tale from the 19th century. It's in section six of the book, which is called Inflammatory Fabrics, Flaming Tutus and Combustible Crinolines. That's a title. (laughs) Anyway, this is just a piece of that section. It's a story about Clara Webster. She was a ballerina, and honestly, anything dance-related I absolutely love and find fascinating. She was dancing the role of a royal slave, and they were pretending to splash in a Turkish bath scene. The pool was actually filled with lights, which were uncovered, and Clara's skirt caught fire. It burned incredibly fast, and she was badly disfigured and ended up dying from her burns. And when the newspapers reported this, they described her in so much detail and just in really condescending ways. It was rather upsetting, honestly. (laughs) And no one helped this girl for over a minute while she was burning on stage in the middle of a performance. The other dancers were afraid of also catching fire, which was a definite possibility, so I can understand why they didn't get involved. But also, apparently, the fire buckets in the wings of the stage were empty. So there wasn't any water anywhere near. What a horrible way to finish your career. So I wanted to do a quote of the week this episode. This has ended up being kind of an odd, um, sort of dark episode, and I didn't really plan it that way. That's just kind of how things fell together, and uh, it's just kind of what's going on in my life right now. I'm just going to go with it. And this quote seemed fitting for today. This is from the author Christina Rasmussen. When everything looks the same on the outside, yet everything has changed on the inside, we break. We break in half. This is the duality of loss. I don't know. That's where I'm at this week, book lovers. Um, Thank you so much for listening. Things should be back to normal now, but honestly, who knows? It's been a chaotic couple of months, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised by much right now. (laughs) But I am keeping a positive attitude and believing that I am going to get a break, at least for a little while. Hopefully. (laughs) At least I have my books. I am super excited about the next one that I'm reading, and I'm just going to leave it at that for now. You'll have to stay tuned. (laughs) For any past episodes of the podcast, you can check out my YouTube channel, or booksandcatspod.com, or also just anywhere you get podcasts. Plus, if you go to the website, I've got fun merch, my books, and all other things books and cats. (laughs) So check that out, and I will be back next week with more books and cats. Until next time, book lovers, keep reading.